Yes. All right. of Student Affairs, and I'd like to welcome everyone to the Maine State School of Medicine White Coat Ceremony. <laughs> Students, the amazing class of 2027. You began as physicians in training just three weeks ago and have already completed a series of firsts. Your first anatomy lab patient, medical school lecture, case-based learning session, even your first exam, along with a whirlwind of emotions filled with new friends and colleagues. This ceremony marks the official beginning of four years filled with so much personal and professional growth. Today, we warmly welcome each of you as you sit among your new colleagues and welcome your family and friends who have supported you over many years, both here today and watching from afar, and whose support you will continue to have and it will be an important strength for you on this journey. We are so glad you have joined us on this very special occasion. First, I'd like to introduce our distinguished Dean, Dr. Weil Socker. As Dean, he oversees the Office of Medical Education, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the Recruitment and Evaluation of Department Chairs, and the Recruitment and Evaluation of School of Medicine-based directors. Dr. Socker is a nationally recognized academic pathologist and with a track record of independent and collaborative National Institutes of Health Funding and with seminal contributions in the field of genitourinary neoplasia and prostate cancer. He has also assumed leadership roles in professional and community-based organizations. Dr. Socker is a committed leader who aspires to excellence and expects it from himself and his team. His relatively short tenure in the School of Medicine reflects these commitments and his priorities of students, well-being, diversity, and inclusivity. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Wenyu. Welcome to this magnificent venue. Good choice. Uh, committee and, uh, and our uh, alumni, you are embarking on a formidable lifetime challenge, not just in terms of knowledge and skills, but also in terms of personal growth, commitment, and relationship. You will be seeing and providing cares for people during their most vulnerable time. They will come to place their ultimate confidence and trust in you, and they will seek your assistance with their health, the care of their family members, and their very lives. Very few people would have that responsibility and that trust. You have every right to be proud of the hard work that brought you to this point. And we are proud to welcome you to the Wayne State University School of Medicine also. I know during your journey, you appreciate the commitment and the support that your family, friends, some of your teachers who recognized your gifts and cultivated your talents. They were instrumental in your journey 
and I am sure you feel gratitude towards the many people who sacrificed and invested in you so that you could be here today as a physician in training. We have faculty second to none who will instruct you and mentor you. Their role is to work with you so you can become the best doctors you can be. The kind of physicians our School of Medicine have always been proud of. Your job would be to listen, to ask questions, to interact, to have the curious minds that brought you here in the first place. These are qualities that you must always cherish in the medical school. And to become successful as a physician, you need to keep them. They will serve you as long as you are a doctor, and many of us can attest to that. You'll be in the midst at Wayne State University Medical School of a diverse environment, faculty, staff, and especially your fellow students. Our school and university cherish our diversity, and all are committed to enhance them as we move along our journey throughout your medical school years and beyond. As you probably know, our faculty with the participation of our students provide care for many underserved residents of Detroit and surrounding community, Wayne County in particular. Our patients and citizens at large will provide you with unique experience that brings Wayne State again our medical school into a close, close contact with patients earlier than many other medical schools in the country. In addition to developing your clinical skills and your compassion, patient, physician interaction, you would enhance your appreciation for the social and for the economic determinants of health in our communities. We know that you will be fulfilling your duties towards your patients with professionalism and respect. These interactions will help you also to become the doctors who do not treat diseases only, but the whole patients, and sometimes also attend to their families with dignity and respect. That's the type of doctors that we are proud to train at Wayne State University. Your white coat today is an important symbol of your initiation into medicine. And it's the beginning of your journey towards a great calling. This coat distinguishes you from about 10,000 applicants to our medical school annually. All of us saw something very special in you to respond to this calling. We hope you enjoy your journey with us, your education, your interactions, your friendship that you will build. Embrace our diversity, embrace your fellow students, make everyone feel included and welcome. So your training of a special breed of professions. Always remember that engaging the most honorable profession is the healing of fellow human beings. Congratulations to the class of 2027 and welcome to Wayne State Medical School. Thank you, Dean Ch Sacker. I would now like to introduce Dr. Margit Chadwell. Dr. Chadwell is the Associate Dean of Student Affairs and Career Development for our School of Medicine. She has roots in Germany and Switzerland and is a first-generation physician. As a family medicine specialist, she has practiced the full clinical scope from obstetrics to geriatrics while also raising her own family. 
Dr. Chadwell has held key leadership positions throughout her career, and while chief resident discovered her genuine passion for the learner in medical education. In 2010, she returned to direct the Family Medicine Clinical Clerkship and to launch the Robert R. Frank student-run free clinic in the most uninsured zip code in Detroit, providing basic medical primary care. Beyond our city limits, she serves on international medical and public health missions to significantly marginalized communities. She is a regional advisor for the Christian Medical and Dental Association, a Leonard Tao awardee of the Gold Humanism Honor Society, and an Ansbacher Scholar for the Michigan Medicine and Ross School of Business Executive Leadership Program in Academic Medicine. She has been involved last seven years, culminating with a historic 100% for the Thank you, Dr. Wainio. Wow, isn't this just a beautiful, beautiful Detroit landmark in which to celebrate And for that, I also want to recognize our dear many medical schools, and I'm sure you would have gotten a fine uh, medical education at those institutions, but there is really only one place that you can become a true Wayne Warrior MD, and that's right here in the city. And so we want to really acknowledge that because this school is steeped in very rich history, as is the city. And I think you will find that you will get a unique, a very unique medical education right here in, in Detroit. So as you evolve from candidate to physician, and I've seen many of you, uh, you know, sign your emails with, you know, a, a physician candidate, class of 2027, as your emails come in. Um, and as you become that physician, the white coat you will slip on today will quickly become a staple in your wardrobe. So before you are cloaked today, let's take a, a little bit closer look at the design. The medical student jacket, actually, not coat, is symbolically short. And the final 10 inches, as many of your family here today know, it's going to cost you a lot, about $200,000. And, and for you, it's going to cost you a lot of energy, dedication, a lot of uh, uh, some challenges, low points, but a lot, of, a lot of really great triumphs as well. After the development of antibiotics, the physician in white became a symbol of hope. The word white in Latin is candidus, from which comes candidate, originating from Dr. Walker has not covered the anatomy of the white coat, which is what I'd like to share with you uh, briefly here. Uh, this is my own anatomy lesson on that, uh, so take it for what, it, what it's worth to you. Uh, but over the left ch uh, chest is a pocket. It's strategically placed over your heart. When you reach for something in it, I hope you will remember this, our human connection. Three buttons to secure and align the two sides of your coat. These are the fasteners that will bring your scientific knowledge in alignment with compassionate patient care, or what our patients call bedside manner. Let the top button closest to your ears represent hearing. How often have you heard people complaining that that doctor really didn't seem to be listening to me? If you can train yourself to really listen, your patients will almost tell you their diagnosis. 
So let us remember to really literally button up and listen. The second and center button represents the value of humor. While the practice of medicine really is a serious matter, there are so many moments that can lighten the burden of both the doctor and the patient. In fact, laughter itself is good medicine, an ancient prescription found in the scriptures and one that I keep on my desk every day. Do not take yourself too seriously, even when wearing that bright white coat, and be able to laugh at yourself. Your patients will appreciate a doctor who's down to earth and actually real. Symbolically at the bottom is the third button of humility, and that brings it all together for a super good fit. This quality does not come easily to our profession, even though lessons in humility abound throughout our training and practice. We can experience that test score that just fell short, a misdiagnosis, or the patient that will not recover in spite of our very best efforts. Humility is also realizing that you've been selected to embark on this career by faculty who believe in you, and in your potential, a patient who puts their trust in you, uh, just at the sight of your white coat actually, and that you are an instrument of true healing, which I believe comes from above. Fully aligned, your two hands should now easily slide into your two pockets, one hand in the scientific, one in the human realm. Your hands will always be your, your primary instruments, even with all the gadgetry we have now. Like nothing else, the human touch defines the doctor-patient relationship. Just like the white coat will need occasional cleaning, laundering to stay crisp and bright, so you will need to find a way to keep your dedication and idealism that I know you all have today in full amount. Paradoxically, the practice of medicine can be very dehumanizing. The rigors of your training, the pressures of practice, they all, they all diminish your ideals or they threaten to do so as you relaunch your professional lives. It will take a deliberate effort on your part to maintain and grow your vision of the physician that you want to become. Our beautiful gathering here today is evidence of our collective support as you officially launch your journey with us on the highway to excellence right here in, De in the Motor City of Detroit nonetheless. And we don't take it lightly. We really don't. We are really here for you. Um, all my best to each of you and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chadwell. Now it gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Rebecca Klisch-Halbert, President of the Medical Alumni Association. Dr. Klisch-Halbert is Associate Professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Neurosciences, Program Director for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry for D the DMC Wayne State University Program, and as President of the Medical Alumni Association Board of Governors, an incredibly dedicated and committed alumna. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Klish Halbert. Thank you, Dr. Wainio. On behalf of the Medical Alumni Association, I'm delighted to extend a heartfelt welcome to the newest members of the Wayne State University School of Medicine family, the class of 2027. As Dr. Wainio said, I'm Dr. Rebecca klisch Holbert, President of the Medical Alumni Association Board of Governors. And I'm also a proud three-time graduate of the Wayne State University School of Medicine. My medical school, residency, and fellowship diplomas all bear the Wayne State University seal. Today is an exhilarating day. Not only is it a significant first step for each of you in becoming exemplary physicians, but it's also the beginning of a lifelong connection with the Medical Alumni Association. Our 26,000 living alumni span the nation and the world. And I have the honor and the privilege to lead what is arguably the most active and engaged medical alumni association in the country. Our alumni are constantly striving to find ways to enrich and enhance your medical education. Rest assured that the Medical Alumni Association will be by your side throughout the next four years and 40 or more years after that. We will be here to celebrate with you at the beginning and the end of your journey through medical school. And between those milestones, we'll provide financial support to your student organizations. We'll serve as mentors, advisors, coaches, and cheerleaders. You've already been the recipients of the generosity of our alumni. The Medical Alumni Association and its generous donors provided each one of you, all 306 members of the class of 2027, with a white coat. When you walk across the stage, 
you'll receive a card that bears the name of your sponsor. When things calm down, and I promise eventually they will, it's important that you take a moment to show your gratitude for your sponsor's assistance and encouragement. It's always been so meaningful to me to hear from the students that I've sponsored a coat for and to forge that personal relationship. And if you're lucky, your sponsor might even become a mentor. Please remember as you embark on this exciting and sometimes overwhelming journey that you are not alone. We are here to support you and guide you along the way. Class of 2027, I wish you the very best and welcome you to the Wayne State University School of Medicine family. Thank you, Dr. Fleshalbert. Our next speaker is Dr. Mary Moriali. Dr. Moriali is Professor of Psychiatry, Chief of Psychiatry at Carmano's Cancer Institute, Deputy Editor of Academic Psychiatry, and Faculty Mentor for the Gold Humanism Honor Society. On a personal note, she's also taught me much of what I know about humanism in clinical practice and in medical education. I cannot think of a more fitting person to speak with you about the significance of this very special white coat ceremony. Dr. Morialli. Good morning, everybody. I'm assuming it is still, yes, good morning. As the faculty advisor of the Gold Humanism Honor Society, I want to welcome you all, students and parents and other family and friends, to the White Coat Ceremony. The White Coat Ceremony was designed by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation as a way to welcome new students into the medical profession and to set clear expectations regarding their primary role as physicians by professing an oath. Today, the ceremony emphasizes the importance of compassionate care and scientific proficiency. The first white coat ceremony took place at Columbia University in 1993. Grants from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation have made widespread advocacy of this ceremony possible. Currently, a white coat ceremony or similar rite of passage occurs at 97% of medical schools within the United States and Canada, as well as osteopathic schools and schools of medicine in 13 other countries. At the ceremony, students are welcomed by their deans and other respected leaders who represent the value system of the school and the profession. The cloaking with the white coat, which is the a symbol of our medical profession, is a hands-on experience that underscores the bonding process. It is personally placed on each student's shoulders by individuals who believe in the student's ability to carry on the noble tradition of doctoring. It is a personally delivered gift of faith, comp compassion, and confidence. We are here to honor each of you today into this profession and our community. Now I would like to turn the microphone over to Mr. Miles Hardiman, class of 2024, and president of the Gold Humanism Honor Society. Uh, Mr. Hardiman is here to introduce our keynote speaker. Mr. Hardiman. Hello everyone, my name is Miles Hardiman and I'm the president of the Gold Humanism Honor Society. The Gold Humanism Honor Society is an organization whose mission is to elevate the values of humanism and professionalism within the field of medicine. It is also to recognize students, residents, and role model physicians who are exemplars of a demonstrated excellence in clinical care, leadership, compassion, and dedication to service. I'm here today to present the Leonard Tao Humanism and Medicine Award. This award is presented by the Gold Humanism Honor Society 
each year to a faculty member who best demonstrates outstanding compassion in the delivery of care, respect for patients, families, and colleagues, and clinical excellence. This, winter, this year's winner is Dr. Latanya Riddle-Jones. Dr. Riddle-Jones is a shining example of how a physician can truly make a difference. She does this not only by providing her patients with compassionate, collaborative, and scientifically excellent care, but also by training future physicians to do the same. So without further ado, I present Dr. Latanya Riddle-Jones, the 2023 Leonard Tao Humanism and Medicine Award winner. Good morning. Now, it is such an honor to speak with you all today. Um, I would like to thank Dean Socker and Senior Vice Dean Baker for all that they do and for allowing me to have this opportunity, as well as all of our deans, faculty, staff, Miles, and all of the students. Thank you to the wonderful family and friends for always being present physically and in spirit as well. Congratulations to the class of 2027. You have earned this. All of your hard work has and will continue to pay off. So I'm really excited to be up here and honored. Um, there's so much that I'd like to talk to you, the students, and your family and friends about, but I only have a few minutes. So with that few minutes, I will focus on talking to you about the privileges that have been afforded to me because of this thing called a white coat. It truly is the equivalent of a superhero's cape. You put that coat on and people tell you things and expose themselves physically and emotionally. Now, I'm a Marvel fan and I'll always remember in Spider-Man movie when Spider-Man's Uncle Ben told him that the cape gave him power. And with that power comes great responsibility. Now this has been said many times in history by real superheroes, but that was for the little and the big Marvel fans in the room today. Now it means that if you have the ability to do something, make sure you do it for the good of others. It's the privilege that comes with wearing that white coat, literally and figuratively, that you will be provided the power to put your knowledge into practice. Now you learned a little of, about my identity from Miles just now, who eerily looks like the human form of Miles Morales for all of those who follow the Spider-Man theme here. <laughs> um, but um, my identity, I have to prioritize it and recognize my identity in different ways. And that happens daily, hourly, minute to minute. That prioritization is fluid or ever-changing based on my immediate needs and my environment. Now, in this moment, I would prioritize my identity as professor, physician, American, black mother and child, ally and friend. Keeping that in mind, let's explore the definition of the word privilege. Now, according to the Oxford Dictionary, it means a special right, advantage, or immunity granted or available only to a particular person or group. Now, of course, with me being a pediatrician, being a mom, and trying to remain cool and relevant ally to young people, um, I also had to look this up in the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> I'm glad you guys left at that. Um, there, the definition of the word privilege was similar, but emphasized the fact that it is not an inalienable right. Though it is earned, it is also something that can be taken away. Okay, so I want you all to, to realize that. Okay, and we'll, we'll start talking about that now. You're going to hear me talk about it over the next four years. The privilege of wearing the white coat literally and figuratively has done so much for myself and for my colleagues. It has allowed my grandmother and her physician treating, and the physician treating her husband, my grandfather, to allow me to speak to my family about end of life decisions for him with my other family members. And that was while I was a third year medical student. It has allowed me to be in the delivery room with friends who were high risk when most of their family members were not able to be in the room. It has allowed me to be in the triage area of the emergency department with my son who has peanut allergies 
and to tell them, the doctors treating him, that he needed racemic, an aerolized form of epinephrine, because his voice had acutely changed. And from our learned experience, we knew that this is what he needed to keep his airway open. They, the doctors in the room treating him, admitted that they would not have realized this because they had not previously heard him speak. The privilege of the white coat has allowed my classmate to work for Doctors Without Borders, the privilege to acquire Ebola, and to survive and become a CNN medical correspondent. The privilege of the white coat literally and figuratively allowed me to be my grandmother's medical power of attorney, and in March of 2020, to go into her assisted living home in Royal Oak, to take her with an oxygen tank to the Detroit Medical Center to be treated by my friends, colleagues, and trainees for what I knew was the best possible care from those who had taken excellent care of the first patients with COVID-19 in Detroit during the pandemic. But just as quickly, the pandemic and this new illness took that privilege away as I entered the emergency room doors. Even though the white coat had always allowed me to get through those doors pre-pandemic, because I was not directly working in the emergency department at that time, I could not go beyond those doors with my 93-year-old grandmother. That's when I had to remember that those wearing the white coat, figuratively at that time, because we no longer were wearing our coats at that time, in the hospital, those, those people were my colleagues, they were my friends, they were the students that I had trained. They had earned and maintained my trust. And my 93-year-old grandmother survived to get COVID-19 a second time that same year. And that was actually a privilege too. Now, as a reminder, a sad example, um, I received a phone call about a week ago from a colleague and friend who had lost that privilege. Um, she gave me a call last week to let me know that she finally had attained her freedom again, as poor mentorship and decision-making led her to making decisions that took that privilege away. Um, she was calling to let me know that she had been released from a federal prison after serving years for Medicaid fraud. So with that, how do you maintain this earned privilege? Now there are many ways, but as one of your professors, I like to use frameworks and so, I will give you a couple of words of wisdom from a framework that I love to discuss in class. That is a framework of cultural humility and cultural competency. Please remember that lifelong learning from patients and community members is required of you. The patient is the expert in their lived experience. Continual self-reflection is needed in the care of others and the care of yourselves. I'm gonna repeat that, and the care of yourselves. Try to always have an awareness of biases and assumptions. Focus on others and conditions of injustice to create justice for all. And, you have and that you have attained and will continue to attain great knowledge. Do not forget to put that knowledge into practice. Make being excellent a part of all of your identities. Congratulations to the class of 2027, your friends and family. To the friends and family, please remember that they will need you and may not make it to all the family events for a while, but they will return to you in a few years. Please continue to be that pillar of support that they need in this time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Riddle Jones, for taking the time to be here today and for the truly inspiring remarks. Now, on to the business at hand, what you've all been waiting for the presentation of the white coats. The names of all students will be read, regardless of whether they are in attendance today. Dr. Joshua Collins, internal medicine physician and medical director of the Cato Clinical Skills Center will begin reading the student names. Students will come forward to be coded by one of our deans or faculty members, a physician family member or mentor, or a WSU alum. 
All alumni will be recognized by the year that they graduated from the School of Medicine. After you are coded, Dean Soccer will pass on to you a lapel pin in recognition of you joining the Wayne State University School of Medicine family. Wear it with warrior pride. Then, Dr. Steffes, our Associate Dean of Clinical Education and Surgeon, will provide you with the unique Wayne Warrior MD Professionalism Pledge and Declaration of Commitment. Finally, Dr. Klush Holbert will offer congratulations on behalf of the Alumni Association and present you with a card indicating who generously sponsored your white coat. Our first group of students will be coded by Dr. Richard Baker, ophthalmologist and senior vice dean and vice dean of medical education, and by Dr. Sarkis Kuyumjian, class of 1998, emergency medicine physician and director of career advising. Let us begin. Parmita Abdoli. Abir Abu Kamil. Ariana Afonso. Ariana Afracte. In Hunanya Destiny Agamo Bilal Ahmud to be coded by an alum from the class of twenty twelve. Saleh Ahmed. Abdullah Al Tekriti. Muklis Al Abdel Razak Jonathan Albrecht Caitlin Allen Dogan. <laughs> Renee and Dino Galva. Ariana Arsenas. Suri Raj Atluri. Alexa Addy, to be coded by an alum from the class of 
1990. Natalie Alessino. Johnny Mateo Avila Mendoza. Raina Audish. Devin Babby. Rajo Babo. Rina Budron. Akshita Balagani Katya Barco Charles Batista. Hayat Bazi. Reed Becker. Donashi Beatty. To be coded by an alum from the class of 2023. Manath Beatty to be coded by an alum of the class of 2023. Caitlin Benitez. Blake Bergerson. Yasmin Berry to be coded by an alum of the class of 1998. Ryan Byers.
Amina Baradia. Braden Bitterman. Rahul Bodupati. Abigail Bojanowski. Sanjeev Bola. Elizabeth Bolton. Shivani Bangu. Gabriel Budak. Whitney Boyer. Sophia Braun. Jenna Brokaw. Deanna Brown. William Burstein. Samantha Carranza. Sean Carroll. Robert Shahoub. Timothy Shalom. Basim Chama.
Kevin Lung Chow. Samar Shehab. Grace Chen. Kelly Chen. Anish Cherukuri. Ariana Cho. Evan Chu. Polina Choikov. Colton Clymer. Hunter Cohn. Melissa Cotto. Kendall Conway. Tobias Cox. Alexandra Crawford. Annette Crespo. Fabiola Cuellar. Ye Ming Chue Nicholas Deher. Layla Darwish.
Catherine Devanzo. Jesswin David to be coded by an alum from the class of 2020. Sohej Dio to be coded by an alum from the class of 1998. Amandeep Dahi. Brendan Dolan. Pontia Dorudian. Carter Dunaway. Ethan Dunn. Diana Duque. Magna Devour. Sarah Eggert. Bilal El Hassan to be coded by an alum from the class of 1994. David Elias. Natalie Erickson. <laughs> Emilio Espinal. Madeline Evans. Laith Summer Fakori.
Madeline Fink. Nicole Flores. Preston Fong. Benjamin Frimadig, <laughs> Beverly Fu, Gloria Fung. William Gadbois. <laughs> Nand Ganesh. Sen Gao Camden Gardner Kendall Gartrell Matthew George Kathleen Girdler, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1992 and residency class of 1996. Miranda Goodson, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1995. So we will now invite Dr. Wainio back to the stage for our second group of students to be coded by Dr. Margaret Chadwell, class of 1994, family medicine physician and the associate dean of student affairs and career development, along with Dr. Kevin Sprague, class of 1980, surgeon and associate dean of admissions. Akash Gopal. Reed Gordon. Kendall Grazak. Sophia Greemert. (laughs) 
Louise Haddad. Constantinos Halkius. Joseph Hanania. Andrew Hanudi. Masood Haradi. Emma Harris. Jenna Hart, to be coded by alumni from the classes of 1991 and 1993. Heba Hassan. Alex Hayes. Riley Hazen, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1995. Ward Hedges. Francis Hernandez. Amy Herrera. Keon Hirschberger. Trey Hill. Annie Hillenberg. Charles Hughes. Toby Hulst, to be coded by an alum from the class of 2002. Kab Hussein. Oh. 
Aria Hutchinson. Ken Wynn Jr. Daniel Ibrahim. Chirima Ihaini Okahalam. <laughs> Neha Iska, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1993. Amber Jackson. <laughs> Kenneth Jackson. Megana Jalagum. <laughs> Max Johnny. Ely Jarvjus. <laughs> Olivia Jekyll, to be coded by an alum from the class of 2021. Amolak Jand. Hannah John <laughs> Megan Johnson. Jalen Jones. <laughs> Indria Joplin.
Kendra Juliet. Adam John. Alexander John Calibut to be coded by an alum from the class of 1997. Cassidy Camrata. Joseph Kananen Anna Carley Yusuf Kashlan, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1998. Manwinder Kaur. Sukunjit Kar Emma Keir to be coded by an alum from a, the class of two thousand and four. Hella Karaman Tarek Karmali Claire Coombe. Amin Khan. Hamza Khan Sabrina Khan Mina Kian to be coded by an alum from the class of 2023 Lauren Kim
Yeonju Kim. Michael Corner. Jonah Cornblue. Alexis Kralovich. Dwani Krishnan. Nishant Kumar. <laughs> to be coded by alumni from class of 1998 and residency class of 2006. Alec Landau. <laughs> Jacob Lavalli. Hyuk Jun Lee. Henry Lee. Ryan Lee. Bradley Libs. Erica Lopez. <laughs> Jeffrey Liu. Anna Lund. Rachel Likens.
Ibrahim Malik. Zara Malik to be coded by an alum from the class of 2023. Candace Marquette. Michael Mason. Kyle Mastalish. Natalie Mateu. Angina McAlpin. Cassidy McCall. Karina Medina. Mahul Meta. Louis McKenney. Clara Melham. Michael Mello. Bara Mohammed. Madeline Moretti. Chase Muscovic. Ananya Murali. (laughs) 
Marnina Nures. Genevieve Murray. Harshini Musakumar. Suhas Nagapala. Abdul Qadir Najjar. Kalyani Nanauri. Douglas Nefsi. Serbi Naole. Nihar Naimugada. Cairo Norona. Michael Nunu. Joseph Overway. I'd now like to welcome Dr. Collins back to the mic. Our final group of students will be coded by Dr. Eric Ayers, class of 1989, internal medicine, pediatrics physician, and director of student engagement, and Dr. Latanya Riddle-Jones, class of 2008, internal medicine physician, and 2023 Leonard Toe Awardee. Naya Pabla. Timothy Page, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1994 and a second alum from the class of 1959. 
Sabrina Pakula. Vanessa Parada. <laughs> he Yoon Q Park. <laughs> Nikhil. Parachuri <laughs> Venkata Pachigola. Kaylin Patel, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1985. Neethi Patel. Rithik Patel. <laughs> David Pagowski, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1997 and residency class of 2000. Raul Perez de Alejo. <laughs> Ashley Perry. Alexis Pitts. <laughs> Daniel Poe. Sarah Qureshi, to be coded by an alum from the class, residency classes of 1997 and 2009. Simran Qureshi. Raghav Rajesh. Yeah. 
Rhea Rakaja. Shruti Ramamuriti. Zoe Rafael. Kevin Rack. Swetha Reddy. Sarah Raymond, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1992. Alexander Rustam, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1994. <laughs> Philip Riendo. Julia Rink. Mitchell Ritz, to be coded by an alum from the class of 2001. Haley Rizza. <laughs> Fatima Rizvi. Zoha Rizvi. <laughs> Melanie Rofu. John Romanowski. Christopher Ross. Nazi Said <laughs> Zaid Sade.
Dina Saban. Dominic Saka. Nishith Sagubadi. Anastasia Sahu. Yusuf Salama. Alexander Seleski. Danny Soka, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1967. Mikhail Salnikov. Laura Sansotera. Unkita Suthyap Virapu to be coded by an alum from the residency class of 1996. Hassan Sowang. Oase Sibai. Abigail Shook. Tanim Sheikh. Vithi Sharma. Krishnan Shyam Kumar. Benjamin Sider. (laughs) 
Dawson Sloan. Rima Smadi. <laughs> Brennan Smith. Celia Summers. <laughs> Alexander Sonalia, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1991. Mark Sprague. Jack Spurlock. Swathi Shrikantan. Anaga Srivatsa. Riley St. Amour. Audrey Steyert. Josh Sternberg. Yeah. Marley Sternberg. Alexandra Stone. <laughs> Owen Stratton. Heather Sun. <laughs> Solon Tadasa.
Constantine Tangelos, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1994. Mohammed Tarur. Vipul Tukshuk. Bamdad Tayari. Julia Tenbush. Amanda Teschner. <laughs> Nikesh Thadani. Isabel Thomas. Alexandra Thompson. Kit Tran, Alexandra Turfey, Miguel Sita. Barheen Bali. Christian Versen. Emily Vu. Julie Wanio. Dylan Watts, to be coded by an alum from the class of 1984. Rebecca Weber. Nicholas Wigley. <laughs> Alex.
Alexander Weiss. Tyler White. Corian Williams. Zachary Wojcik. Andrew Wu. Ananya Yanamandra. Michelle Yi. Andrew Yu. Sophia Hania Yusuf. Caitlin Zablock. Megan Zacharias. Derek Zanluder. Karen Zapian Guerra. Mini Zhang Tyler Zwang to be coded by an alum from the class of nineteen ninety five.
You beat me to it. I was going to say applaud, but mm. now I'd like to welcome to the stage Dr. Christopher Steffes, MD, our Associate Dean of Clinical Education. Dr. Steffes is a surgical oncologist who has been a faculty member of the Department of Surgery for more than 20 years. He joined the Wayne State University faculty in 1993. He has served as professor, clinician educator in the Department of Surgery since 2009, and is the year three clerkship director and year four surgery director at the Wayne State University Department of Surgery and for Henry Ford Hospital since 1997. He earned a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering in 1982 from Cornell University and his medical degree from the University of Wisconsin Madison School of Medicine in 1986. His steady leadership has been an inspiration to us all and will guide this class from this white coat ceremony through their clinical years. Dr. Steffes handed you the professionalism pledge and will now say a few words about that important document to guide your training here at Wayne. Please welcome Dr. Steffes. Thank you, Dr. Wayne, and thanks for mentioning my graduation year because now everybody can figure out how old I am. Physicians in training, congratulations on stepping into your white coat. Rather than a regal garment bestowed upon you, it is a code of responsibility that you have stepped into. Accepting this code signifies that you are subject to the expectations of the profession, as society has expectations of the profession. As I am reminded regularly, society extracts a lot of flesh in, ex in exchange for the privilege of practicing medicine. Those so-called big bucks do not come without a cost. So what are the characteristics of the profession that you are expected to demonstrate? How can we define a professional? What should, you say, what should you as students use as guideposts on your highway to meeting society's expectations? Can we use, use descriptive adjectives rather than the old dictum that, well, you'll know a professional when you see one? Well, I handed you all a piece of homework that would help you through this. In this document, you will find the laminated copy of our 16 C's. Um, this is a list of descriptors that um, were founded, uh, were developed by a committee, a committee of Wayne State faculty and students uh, several years ago. The committee was led by one of our former deans, Robert Frank. The committee thought, thought of outstanding physicians who were thought of as consummate professionals and then tried to find words to describe them. It was an empiric exercise. And amazingly, all the words had something in common. On this list that you have there on your card, there are 16 adjectives, all starting with a C. And it would seem that this was a gimmick, a contrived, collected, coincidental, convenient colloquy of alliteration. But when you look at them, it is a coincidence, a coincidence of the Latin root. These words describe the physician who excels at professional relationship with the patient. Most of them begin with C or C-O-M, using the Latin root. I know not all of you took Latin in high school. But the Latin root is C-O, co, meaning together with, compassionate, competent, committed, conscientious, compliant, collaborative, confidential, community, collegial, considerate, communicative, and the last, courage. All describe the, the relationship of the physician together with the patient, C-O, co. We will revisit these principles of professional behavior throughout your preclinical years, and especially as you fully apply them when you're seeing patients in your clinical clerkships. So keep this card in a visible place. At least stick it on your refrigerator if you don't frame it. <clears throat> these do not come automatically to those who read it, though. You'll find many opportunities to display these professional characteristics as you progress down the Warrior MD Highway. And when that happens on an everyday basis, your patients will no longer need this guide. They will recognize you as a professional. Throughout the history of medical and healing professions, we as physicians have signaled our commitment to society in the form of oaths. And you have one of those also in the folder that was handed out. I suspect that this, these oaths are even before Hippocrates first wrote them down. 
You are already beginning to employ your training to care for your fellow humans. I know that someone in your class has always been already been able to use their basic life support and first aid that was taught in orientation to help a stranger in distress. As you begin your training, you will signal your willingness to society to learn the profession, not only the knowledge that you'll be tested on, but the attitudes and behaviors expected by your patients. In your folders and in the programs for everyone else, there's an oath of commitment that we recite together with Dr. Baker in a moment. Again, congratulations, welcome, and welcome to the profession. Thank you, Dr. Steffes. Now to a solemn part of our ceremony. I would like to introduce our Senior Vice Dean of Undergraduate Medical Education, Dr. Richard Baker. Dr. Baker is a medical graduate of Harvard Medical School and MIT. He trained as an ophthalmologist and has served in many executive leadership positions, including as provost and dean of the Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science and as associate dean for the UCLA David Gavin School of Medicine. Dr. Baker oversees the education of our medical students and has dedicated the last several years to restructuring the school's medical curriculum to provide an education that produces community leaders as well as outstanding physicians. Dr. Baker will administer the Declaration of Commitment. Dr. Baker. Thank you. Uh, you've heard from my colleagues again and again this morning, this afternoon now, uh, that the wearing of the white coat and representing the profession of medicine is a privilege. This declaration of commitment that we'll now recite is really the contract with society to earn that privilege. So again, I speak with me the declaration of commitment and you can recite after me i solemnly pledge myself to consecrate my life to the service of humanity i will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due I will develop my skills with conscience and dignity. The health of my patients and myself will be my first considerations. I will respect those things that are confided in me. I will maintain by all the means in my power the honor and the noble traditions of the medical profession. My colleagues will be my comrades. I will not permit considerations of religion, nationality, race, party politics, sexual orientation, or social standings to intervene between my duty, my peers, and my patients. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life, and I will not use any medical knowledge contrary to law. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Thank you. I'm going to ask, thank you, Dr. Baker. I'm going to ask the class to rise. And for uh, your first class photo, uh, please have a look at Mr. Matt Guerin over here.
So let me be the first to officially welcome you to the Wayne Warrior MD family, class of 2027. You look good in those white coats. When we're almost done, and I want to give a special thank you to uh, Dr. Collins and Dr. Wainio for uh, all those names and your patients while they were reading them, and we acknowledged every single one of you because every one of you is, is very important, and it's wonderful also to see the alumni that were with you. Uh, just a few words of closing. The white coat that you wear today is a very tangible symbol of this very extraordinary journey that you've embarked upon and together you will carry the impressions from this day for the rest of your lives. To our guests, the ceremony is just the first of several significant milestones that we hope that you will share with us as we celebrate your new physician in training. And in four years, you'll cross another stage, just uh, down, the, down the road, probably at the beautiful Fox Theater, and you will enter into about 30 different specialties. So you'll go, undergo a major transformation but whether you aspire to be that small town rural doc and have a practice uh, out, out in the rural areas or be the department chair, uh, let me now encourage you to embrace all the demands of this very intensive training. What a privilege it is to touch lives in this yet noble profession and it starts right here and now. You have committed to an extraordinary calling and we couldn't be more proud to navigate this journey together with you. This concludes today's cer ceremony and the program, and I want to acknowledge my very, very dedicated student affairs staff there. You've seen them around, and I just want to give them a really special acknowledgement. They worked uh, tirelessly behind the scenes to make this a very happy and memorable occasion for you. It was a pleasure having you all here with us today. Enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. And God bless you.